Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team. I'm making this video on buying the dip, otherwise known as dip buying opportunities. Um, so there are many different ways to trading, right? Uh, you can dip by when you're day trading. You can dip by, you know, swing trading. Um, it's just a matter of, you know, when a stock falls to a certain sp support level, uh, that's when buyers uh, tend to come in and buy the dip. So, you know, it's basically buy low, sell high. When stocks get oversold on a particular time frame on a daily or on a five minute or one minute chart, uh, many times the buyers will come in at a specific period of time. You got to look for the reversal areas. And, um, you know, again, that's where they come in and buy the dip. Dip buying is a very, very popular uh, strategy when trading. Uh, so again, this video, again, I did this for uh, kind of, I just made this chart on um, this stock, uh, Craig, C-R-E-G, that just absolutely ripped today. Um, I believe, yeah, it's one of these China uh, companies today. So this just kind of ripped, I think, basically with just Trump being out in uh, China uh, the past couple of days, it just ends up ripping. Uh, Trade Ideas had uh, <clears throat> several stocks over the past day or so that just kind of ripped up uh, based on Trump being out there and uh, probably, you know, with working some deals with China. Uh, again, uh, Trade Ideas is hands down our favorite scanner of choice. That thing is just, it's incredible. Uh, it, it picked up Craig here today. Uh, again, if you're looking for Trade Ideas, we have partnerships with them. Uh, you can click the link below in this video. Uh, and get a 15% discount. Um, but perfect example, right? So in doing dip buying, you can see this stock, Craig, dropped down this morning, right? It had a big, sharp drop. I'm going to show you the, J the daily chart in a moment. But you'll see this thing just kind of just completely dropped. And it found a little bit of a base here. So you'll see this, the buyers came in here in this green candlestick, right? Um, so it kind of formed a support level. You can see one, two, three areas. There's a support area here. At some point when a stock drastically sells off, buyers will come back in. As you can see, it sharply sold off. The buyers came back in. And then you got to wait for confirmation uh, on, um, you know, when you're going to potentially get on a trade. You got to be very careful, especially with low float stocks on something like this. Uh, you can see like when the market opens like this, there's just huge volatility and you can see 548 <coughs> down to 471. Not the greatest of risk management right here. So I wouldn't necessarily necessarily suggest buying a dip on a very volatile stock with huge candlesticks. Uh, you know, you might want to look over in some areas like over here with smaller candlesticks. Um, you know, you know, basically when, when a stock gets further away from the EMA lines or the moving average lines. Um, you know, whether you're looking on the uh, intraday charts, uh, you would reference usually with day trading the EMAs or the exponential moving average lines or uh, on a daily chart, if you're doing more swing trading or long-term trading, the farther away a stock gets away from the SMA or simple moving averages, uh, buyers will come in. So if a stock is oversold, uh, the buyers will come in and potentially dip by it. Uh, same thing on the intraday charts. So you'll see here, buyers came in, right? Then you got to look for a potential confirmation. And this is where you're going to determine, determine your risk management strategies. Do you get in on a base over here and risk this base here? Or do you wait for the buyers to come in and wait for there to be... Um, uh, a potential buy sign. Again, that's going to be a matter of your risk strategies. Uh, usually when stocks break a high of day or in an anticipation, when you see this nine crossing over the 20, the nine is the blue line, the red is the 20 line, those are potential buy signals. Uh, so you want to keep an eye on those particular areas. I'm showing you a different strategy right now in this dip buying uh, video. This is not particular with dip buying, um, but just to kind of show you that you're looking for buy signals. You know, crossovers on EMA lines are very good buy signals. But throughout a day on day trading, <clears throat> um, you'll see many different dip buying opportunities. This is obviously a dip buy one, but very risky. And I want to show you the risk because of these huge volatile candlesticks. But then you can see, obviously, this stock completely ripped up, and then it kind of falls all the way back down. This almost this big FU pattern, they call it, or uh, 
um, head and shoulders pattern. It's almost like a big middle finger giving you the FU and it just falls all the way down, right? But then it falls all the way back down and it comes down and it creates a new support level here. And then you see this kind of this green doji candle coming in. That's potentially where some buyers might be coming back in again. You can see uh, price is very far away from this 9 EMA. Uh, so as you can see up here, when it's overextended, um, uh, over a past that 9 EMA naturally wants to gravitate back down to it. So you can see it just wants to come right back down to it. And the um, <clears throat> the inverse is true when also with dip buying. The farther away a stock gets from the 9 EMA, um, it naturally wants to gravitate back to it. Some people will use the 9 EMA. Some people will use the 13 EMA, which is basically the kind of the equilibrium or the middle or the go between between the 9 and the 20. It's a matter of your preference, whether you like to use the 13 or whether you use, like to use the 9. We personally like to use the 9. But just to show you here, you can see uh, stock just kind of just drag. It's all the way down. It's bear flag. And you can see a bear flag here bear flag here, but you'll see right down over here, there's a potential reversal with this doji. Buyers came in and there's a, you know, this is where you're going to determine your risk, whether you want to get in on a trade like this. You can see there was a base over here, right? Uh, oh, oh, you know, I, I have my drawing set up. Um, let me go over here to my drawing tool and here we go. You see there was a base here, right? Then it came down and then you'll see it formed a new base here and kind of right there. So it didn't fall below it. So now you can determine on this candle here, 567 to 587, you'll see this is a, let me just make sure, 567 to 587, 20, se 20 cents is obviously a much better risk if you were to risk this candle um, you know, as a stop. So let's say you were going to break, get in on the potential break of the top of this doji candle, risking the bottom of this candle, not necessarily a bottom of this candle. You could, it just obviously, uh, uh, there's a lot more risk there, but 20 cents is a much better risk than, I mean, this huge candle over here, which is what I was at 550 all the way down to 480 ish or something, you know, so the risk on this dip buy is much better than the one over here. Um, but again, you can see stock fell right down over here, formed this doji candle, buyers started to come in. And then you want to be very, very cautious when dip buying of the moving average lines above because um, <clears throat> they form obviously resistance levels. Uh, so when a stock is far away from the EMAs, these are now support. When a stock falls below it, now they become resistant. So it's all a battle of support and resistance, support and resistance. So to give you an example here, this is decent risk management. Again, you have to determine what your risk management um, style is. It's all a matter of what your preference is. I'm a big proponent of having really tight risk management, not like on something over here, but somewhere over here. I'd like a better chart. We're going to pull up some other charts too. Um, I'm actually just going to go random. I'm going to pull up some just ones today and just randomly show whatever pops up showing you of potential dip buy opportunities. Uh, you can see over here, the stock kind of fell over here. Buyers came in over here. You can see Again, a little bit further away than um, from the EMAs. So again, you can see this is a bear flag, but again, bear flags will pull down and go back up. They'll pull down and go back up, pull down and go back up. Uh, and you just be aware of these moving average lines as resistance areas. And if they fail and reject, you can always uh, sell. Uh, again, it's a matter of your strategy, whether you... Um, like dip buying, another way, you know, the inverse of dip buying would be shorting. There are a lot of people that might not like to dip buy and they like to short. So they might come in and when a stock gets super overextended like this, they'll short it on the way down. And it's just the inverse strategy. When a stock finds a top, <coughs> this one obviously probably would have missed it because it just drastically fell so far. But it did get a pop over here where you can see it fell down, kind of popped right back up. Obviously, it's, you know, the risk is not too bad on this. It's still almost a 40 cent risk, 
but a lot of people might short instead and short risking the high of day. So, you know, when this candle popped back up and it didn't touch the high of day, they may have risked shorting it back down. So shorting is just the inverse of dip buying. Uh, it's just a matter of, you know, your preference of trading. Um, dip buyers are usually kind of like they have that mentality where they like to maybe they like to long more. So they like when stocks go up and trading it that way rather than the inverse. Again, all a matter of your preference. So this is some some examples here of dip buying on this particular stock, Craig. Um, let's take a look at some other examples. Again, I'm just going to go randomly and pick just random stocks from today. Um, let's take a look at... Uh, well, this is not a great one here. Let me see here. AMDA. So this is kind of a bear flag. Uh, wasn't the greatest dip. Let me see. 420 up to 464. It's not bad. So again, you can see this one did completely fall on the way down. Formed a re uh, Buyers came in here. Um, but let me see. Let this candlestick here. 440 down to 420. It's a 20 cent uh, risk where, uh, you know, 460 above, um, it's a little bit tighter. You always want to have at least a two to one profit loss ratio. So if you're going to risk 20 cents, you want to be able to make 40 cents per se. Uh, so this one right here might've been a little bit tougher, not the greatest of dip buying. Um, let's take a look at CRTN. <clears throat> let's go over here to the one minute chart, see if there was anything. Um, another way you can do it too is when a stock, you know, you, you can basically call it almost on a bull flag, right? It's a dip buy. A stock goes all the way up and then what it was it want to do? It pulls back to the moving average lines and you can see it kind of falls down and forms a flag. And you can kind of see here right above the 90 EMA buyers kind of came in right here. So this is basically a dip buy. You can call it a dip buy in the flag where it's going up. So now it flags, comes down forms a potential reversal. Again, it's it closes above that 9 EMA, kind of forms a little kind of a top candle there, and then boom, goes up, right? A bull flag. So that's another way to potentially dip by. You can dip by on a bullish play <coughs> on a pulling back of a flag pattern. So again, moving up really quickly, pulls back and consolidates around that 9 EMA. Buyers come in, and boom, you can buy it on the way up. So that's another form of dip buying. Um, let's take a look at some other areas. If there's another one on this one here, there's always, always, always dip buying potential opportunities. Just remember when a stock, the farther away it is from the nine EMA or the 13, whatever one you use, I use the 9 and the 20 when day trading. Some people use the 13. If you use the 13, the farther away the price is from the 13, use that as a gauge. If you use the 9 and the 20, uh, look at the farther away the stock is from the 9. Uh, if you don't use moving average lines and you just use VWAP, that's another resource that you can use too, the farther away a stock is from VWAP. Again, all a matter of your preference. There's not necessarily a right or a, a wrong way to do it, but the right way to do things is always, always, always have proper risk management strategies in place um, and always make sure that you have at least a two to one profit loss ratio where you're able to make, you know, if you're risking 10 cents, make sure you can make 20. If you're risking 50 cents, uh, make sure you can make at least a dollar. So let's pull up some other random ones and see. Um, see what we can see here. Um, <clears throat> see if there's any that really pop out at me here. So again, you can kind of see this stock just ripped and lots of pull, but like, right. So lots of bull flags coming up and then it came right back down here. You probably wouldn't have caught it right here because it moved up so quickly, but then a stock pulled back, it's flagging, kind of forming almost this, this, almost this wedge pattern right here, came down, started to cons consolidate around here. And then you could have bought it right here when it broke. So it held above, it held this nine EMA. And then you could have bought it at the break here. A little bit trickier, you know, you gotta be careful of these wicks and you know, 205 down to 190, not too bad of a stop. It looks worse than it really is. Uh, but as it's consolidating here, boom, I'm gonna break up. You can dip by on the way up again. So this is a bullish play. 
Uh, we'll see what we can do with finding some bearish ones as well. I'm just kind of mixing it up for you, um, seeing ones that might be potentially good to look at. Uh, not liking some of these. Let's go to maybe some of these new yearly low ones and see. <clears throat> now, sometimes it's tough with dip buying to find a stock once it hits its base um, because sometimes things move really, really quickly. Uh, so you can see right here, look at this, man, this thing really just, this is kind of a mess, but look at this. So huge, like, right? So it like, where is this? 875. That's a big, big drop right here. But, you know, again, a stock sells off. It's formed a base right here at the 875. Um, so you can see one, almost two, almost, so the one and two, almost three touched down here. Buyers came in here now. Um, obviously 880 to nine dollars actually not too bad of a risk not as bad as it seems uh, but you got to be careful of these EMAs again I, I wouldn't have traded something like this but this is another example of a dip buy meaning like you know the buyers ended up coming back in and obviously this is just way too crazy oh market's closing this is one's way too crazy to trade but again another example it found a base buyers came back in and then you determine your risk are you going to take a trade like this this is you know obviously a crazy one uh risking the base so like if a break of the high a day here at nine dollars risking 875 um you know let's see here what is this nine dollars up to 915 probably not the greatest risk right you're going to be risking what a lot more um than what you could potentially make because no one knew that this thing was going to break above the moving averages. So, so this is a perfect example of bad risk. You wouldn't necessarily want to risk, what is that, 875 to $9. You wouldn't want to risk 25 cents to be able to make $9 up to 15. Perfect example. So right there, you're risking 25 cents to make 15. That's terrible uh, risk management. You want to do, you don't want to do that. So again, another example of a dip buy that would have been a bad opportunity. Uh, SQ, let's see here. Um, let's pull over here. Let's see. 170 up to 180. No. So this is a dip buy, right? So this kind of came down, but look, it's just kind of choppy. It wasn't looking very well. It did form a base right here. And if you caught it, you could have risked, what is that? 172 down to 170. So this is, um, you know, a two cent candle. And what's the break of that candle? 172 up to 180, right? So again, if you were like a really tight scalper on, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, on a trade, like there's some people that just really like tight scalps, right? They'll see something like this and they'll say, oh, okay. You know, the buyers kind of came in right here as a potential reversal candle. If I got in at the break of that candle, 172 up to 180, that's eight cents. And this candle is two cents. So technically you're risking two cents to make eight. Great risk management. I still probably wouldn't have traded this, but an example of a great scalp dip by play uh, of, uh, you know, good risk management, have it taken like with a really tight stop. Again, I probably wouldn't trade this trade, but just to show you another example. Uh, meats, let's see if this has anything good on it. Uh, not, nothing's really jumping out on me there. SREV. Um, no. CRNT. BKCC. <laughs> uh, VLRS. So let's take a look at this one over here. You can see really, you know, this is, look at that. So this is just, this is crazy. Let's see how long this 987, 967. So this looks worse really than it is. That's a only a 20 cent candle. Um, and then obviously it kind of dropped, found a base right here. So you'll see one, two, and then this is where you can get tricked, right? So, <clears throat> um, you know, some people might, I'll get in right over here. Actually, it's not too bad. It's only one cent here, but so 962 
up to 69. Not a great risk management play. These are ones you just want to avoid. There's just like when they're choppy and there's not a lot of volume. Uh, liquidity is key when trading. So you don't want to just like find random stocks and trade them. You want liquidity. You want volume. Volume is absolutely key uh, when trading. Um, let's see if we can get uh, some um, other ones here for... A mm, little bit choppy here today. Let's look at ENPH. Wow, look at that. Just crazy choppiness. Let's take a look at some bigger ones, right? Let's pull up like, let's go to some daily charts. Apple, let's pull up some bigger ones and look at ones for Apple on a daily chart and show you some dip buys uh, when potentially swing trading uh, on daily charts, right? Um, so let me clear this drawing set over here <clears throat> and let's go to over here. So it was kind of stock was Apple was trending up above this 90 EMA. Then it just kind of drops all below the moving average lines. It's bearish. You can see the nines crossing down below the 20. And as you can see, it fell down and it formed a base right here from this kind of doji candle. This is a potential reversal candle, right? So this candle is, what is that? 151 down to 149. That's a $2 candle right there. And that uh, the top of that candle is 152, let's say, and the top of this EMA is 155. So that's a three dollar move away. You can see it's uh, a potential reversal. So when you see here, some people might say, okay, you know, they whether they're you know trading with shares or trading options out in the future. Um, this is a potential reversal sign. This is a potential where the buyers came in. The buyers came in down here. Um, you can see this is almost like a hammer, but it is a red hander hammer. It's a potential potential sign of re re reverse reversal, and that red hammer then followed by this green doji. That's a potential buy sign. Um, or again, all depending on your trading strategies when you're doing whether you're doing options or stocks. That's a matter of your preference. But as you see, the this uh, came in, formed a base here. Then there's the top of this candle. Then you decide whether you're looking to manage this, you know, what your risk management is. If you're going to get in on the break of the high of this candle here, are you willing to risk 149 to whatever, 152? Are you willing, is the risk worth it? Is it far enough away? Are you doing your proper research to see, ah, I'm willing to take a scalp or a swing trade potentially to get, you know, whether it's a day or two or whether you're looking, whether you, you know, are doing your analysis and you're, and you're believing that Apple is going to go, you know, whether you're looking to ride it out, whether you're going to hold shares or buy long-term options to see Apple potentially go up here. So obviously in a trade like this, if you bought it and held, uh, obviously when it got above 152, you know, to 170 six that's whatever a 24 dollar move that's a good trade so that's an example of a dip buy when you get in here at the break of this candle when the buyers come in you decide whether you're going to risk and you know or whether you're going to take your profits here and wait for re-entry um or um you know you are going to ride it out so that's an example of a dip buy an apple uh let's take a look at maybe some intraday let me go to like five minute charts and see if there's anything that looks potentially good just on apple you can see uh over here there's so here you can see drastic sell-off down here a little bit you'll see the bulls coming in with these wicks buying it up you can still see what is that 173 it's not too bad so you can see some of these are not as bad as they look with these bigger candles you can see a what 173 15 up to 173 94 yeah that is it's you know that is decent, but you can see there's struggles with the bulls coming in, or bulls and the bears coming in. The bulls are pushing it back up, but you can see it's forming kind of a base area here, right? Right down here and down here. So you can say, hey, I'm potentially um, willing to get in on a trade like this, risking, what is that, 43 to 44 down to 13, whatever, 30 cents or so to potentially, um, you know, buy the dip on this and ride it back up keeping aware of these moving average lines at resistance levels. Uh, obviously, if you bought in at the base here, you rode it up through here and you waited for it to, this 9 and the 20 to cross again, <laughs> you could have 
basically rode this nine all the way up. That would have been a nice dip by you bought at the base here and then, you know, kind of saw that it was forming this V wedge pattern, knowing that there'd be resistance basically up in this area. And you're going to either hold to see if it breaks or you're going to sell in this area of resistance. So this is a perfect example of a dip buy. Again, I'm just randomly picking stocks here. I have no clue which ones I'm looking at. I'm just showing you different versions of dip buys and how they work and how to do it. Uh, you can look on the one minute pattern. You can look at the five minute. You can look on the daily. It's all a matter of when uh, what type of trader that you are. But the point being is when a stock sells off and the further it is away from the moving average lines, buyers will eventually come in. You got to find those buy uh, signals where the volume comes in, the buying volume comes in, find the support and resistance levels, and then be aware of, um, you know, obviously always making sure that you're taking your profits. Um, you know, it's better to be too safe uh, than too risky. You know, obviously you can always take your profits and if the stock runs, well, you can always potentially find re-entry. And if you can't find re-entry, if you miss a re-entry point, there's always another stock to trade on a daily basis. There's always something to trade. Don't have FOMO, the fear of missing out. That's a great way to lose money. So let's see if there's any more potential ones to look at here. Um, Let's pull up a stock like Netf or let's do Facebook. Facebook, let's go to a daily chart, see if there's anything. This thing's been in a really great up channel for a while. Let's see if there was a chance when Facebook pulled back. So <clears throat> Facebook had a, let's see here. Facebook was kind of trending along this nine EMA, kind of going back and forth here. And then it fell right down here. You can see a doji candle. This is a red one. Now, again, you got to decide, are you going to take a risk to get on this? I, I'd prefer to see more of a green doji here, but it's one to look at. You can see 162 to 165, $3 level, formed a, a support level there right here and here. So you might say, okay, I saw this thing, um, you know, depending again, your strategy, whether you're day trading, long-term trading, whatever you're doing, um, you can see, you know, some, some, some resistance in these areas here at the time. So you see, what is that? 174, uh, right down here is 162. Uh, what is this here? 165. So let's say you were 160. 273 to 165 just say that's about two dollars right and what is this 165 to 169 right so when the when the stock was away from the moving average lines and you see this doji can uh, candle form you can see that 162.83 uh man it's tough for me to do this <laughs> this math really quick here 165.48. Uh, what is this, man? Let me do this. Let me get my calculator out here. <laughs> man, calculator. Let's do this. So 165.48 minus 162.93. 62.93. 93 equals 255. So you'd be risking, if you were to get in the break of the high of this candle, you're risking 255. Now let's see how high it is away from these EMAs. Again, that's your first line of resistance. Obviously, if you were to hold potentially for it to go back up to these resistance areas, that's a great trade. Um, but let's take a look to the first line of defense. Uh, 169.05, 169.05 minus 165.59, 165.59 equals 346. So it's not a two to one ratio. Uh, again, it's all a matter if you're holding long term and you see the overall a uh, long-term trend on Facebook and you believe with doing your charting and analysis that it's going to go and break uh, the 175 area and continue upwards, then risking, 
you know, $2.55 to be able to get to this area, 165 up to 170, basically 175, that's $10. So you're risking, let's say $2.50, 55 cents to be able to make $10. That is a great risk management. That's more than a two to one profit loss ratio. So that would be an example of a potential good dip buy if you're going long term, right? So again, you can see prices somewhat further away from these EMAs. Obviously, the more drastic it is, uh, the better. Let's go, let's pull up any more in, on an intraday chart here, see if there's any decent, uh, nothing really great. Nothing really great on these. Let's pull up one more. Let's do Netflix. Uh, again, a bigger term stock. So you saw some examples of some small cap stocks. Let's pull, I'm pulling up some higher cap ones right here. Um, not seeing anything really on the five minute. You'll see a lot more of the volatility when day trading with some of these small cap stocks. Uh, let's pull up some random. Yeah, I'm not like, cause these are in, in up channels right here. Uh, cause the market's been going up. Let's pull up some, some garbage uh, um, pump and dump stocks. Dries, Dries is probably not the best one because that thing's just a garbage one. Let's pull up, let's see, INFI. That's on a daily chart. Let's go intraday on this one here. And let's see, going back over here. I thought I just saw it. So this one right here, you can see a uh, perfect example of Sometimes you'll get potential fake outs where you'll see a big red candlestick followed by a green one. But this is a tough one because of the wicks on the top. Um, it kind of pushes it down. It's tough to manage risk on this. And then some people will get trapped on a candle like this. And then it falls right back down again and fine. So you'll see there was support here. You can think, oh, the buyers are going to come in. But no, it fell right back down. Now you have, this is a little bit easier. It's still a little bit trickier here. Uh, with these wicks here, uh, obviously you want to get in above this candle here. You can see it's got some support right there and down here. So then you're going to determine. So this is not bad. You can see there's two cents here that you're risking at the bottom of this wick. And then what is this one? 221 down to 218, three cents. So you got about a total of five cents here. And what is the top of this one? 221 up to 226, that's five cents away. But the high of the day, you know, was basically 236. Then you got to look at the other areas of what was happening previously and then determine, you know, again, buyers did come back in and you can see the stock did rip and it went back up. So once it moved above this nine EMA, then you got to watch. So now if you were to risk, if you were a scalper and you were risking here, uh, 221, down to 216, that's five cents, right? Five cents here. And then uh, the high of day was 236 down to 221. So perfect example, when it stock, when this stock broke right here, you can see the high of day was 236. The break of this candle was 221. So there's a 15% potential move. Obviously being careful of this nine EMA as resistance, you know that if the stock breaks above this nine EMA, there's the potential for it to go up to the high of day and the potential of it to break the high of day. Uh, so there's room to run. So here you're risking five cents. Um, obviously there's that 226 down to 221, that's you're risking five cents to potentially make five. That's one to one, not great, but you're obviously you would take a trade like this in the potential that it's going to go and have more room to run. So you're still at one to one ratio, not bad. And then it gets up. So now you're risking five cents to make 15. That's a three to one profit loss ratio. That's really good. That's really good risk management. That's tight risk management, a potential really good scalp. Uh, if you were to get that in at the break of this candle down here, risking high of day <clears throat> or looking to take profit at high of day of potentially 15 cents, um, you know, obviously if you uh, size in, you know, if you have a thousand shares, that's 150 bucks. Uh, if you bought, uh, um, you know, 
3,000 shares, that's, uh, what, 450 bucks. Again, it just goes up from there. But as you see, obviously, as you see, you can see it went, it broke high of day, right? And it went all the way up to basically, let's just say you um, didn't get this candle here, but you just got, you sold somewhere in between here, right? <clears throat> so let's say, uh, what is that? 250. So perfect example. Now it broke high of day and you have to be careful of whole and half dollar amounts, psychological support and resistance area. So you got to be aware, obviously watching level two time and sales and charting your stock properly um, that chances are traders might be taking some profit in that area. It's a big potential resistance area being a whole do a half dollar amount. So again, you risked five cents. It broke through this wall of the 9 EMA. You watched it on the high of day. It broke through. If it failed here, it would have been really, if you saw this stock fail and it was falling down, then you'd obviously want to take some profits. But because you got in when the risk management was low, when it found a support level, <clears throat> you were able to risk a little bit more and ride through the risk of the break of this high of day. And then obviously you went up right here. You could have, again, green candles, it's flagging kind of here. Got a little choppy, but it was still moving up. And then even if you saw, if you missed and didn't take profit and it fell right back down here and you and you, you didn't sell at the top of this candle, but you sold down here when it hit the bottom of this red candle, this is still $2.46, right? And you got in at $2.21. That's a 25 cent move. That's a great, that's a great um, trade. So basically you had risked on this trade five cents to make 25. That ends up being a great trade. Again, I'm just picking random ones to show you how this works. I'm trying to show you several different ways to do it, doing it on the one minute, the five minute, the daily. Um, again, it doesn't matter what time frame you're doing. Dip buying is essentially buying when a stock hits a support level. Uh, many of times, again, when a stock is falling uh, down rapidly um, and it's an oversold area or, you know, on bull flags, you know, when a stock goes up and it pulls back to the moving average lines, it's pulling back, buying the dip on the break of that flag going up. So uh, hopefully these examples helped you on buying the dip.